Thanks very much. Good morning. As I, uh, as I said, my name is Pat Stowey, and I'd like to tell you something about the quality issues in the hydrogen projects of, uh, of Gazuni. Yes. First of all, something about our company. NV Nederlandse Gazuni is, uh, the net, uh, is in the Netherlands the only TSO and, uh, for natural gas, and we possess uh, a lot of infrastructure in the Netherlands, but also in the northern part of Germany. The main source of the gas transport was up to now the Groningen gas field in the northern part of uh, the Netherlands. But due to earthquake problems, the, 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 the wells will uh, be closed and more and more the gas uh, running through the Netherlands will come from foreign countries and no more from the Groningen field. And one of the results of that change is that there is a decreasing amount of natural gas running through the gas pipelines. The export of natural gas is, uh, is uh, um, um, much uh, less. So uh, finally, a part of the pipelines will become available for other purposes. And that makes it possible for Gazun to fulfill its uh, hydrogen, its green ambitions. And Gasuni believes that we cannot solve all problems in the energy transition with electrons only. Green molecules are also required for several purposes, uh, which means that hydrogen is uh, one of the best uh, candidates for a lot of green solutions. And based on the available infrastructure, uh, which comes, uh, yeah, which we don't need anymore for the natural gas. Uh, we have to modify and ex extend those pipelines and we will be able to create a hydrogen infrastructure in the Netherlands with also connections to import terminals and foreign countries, neighbor countries. And the window we have in mind is that uh, for, for, for this transition is from now up to 2050, but the main part we hope will be in the next uh, 10 years. Probably the first uh, hydrogen ecosystem in uh, the Netherlands will be completed before uh, 2027 and will be in the Groningen area, uh, again in the northern part of the Netherlands. And by using former natural gas pipelines, uh, we will be able to have the grid available relatively quick. And um, we only have to connect the storage. The storage is not ready now, but uh, one uh, salt cavern is, is, is ready. So we have to build the plant and connect it to both the pipeline and, uh, and the salt cavern. And main problem to speed up an uh, ecosystem like this is that both uh, consumers and producers have to grow in the same pace uh, with, each, with each other. Uh, to, because uh, yeah, you, you need the combination of producing and consuming at once. So it's very complex to let it grow at the, at the right uh, speed. Both groups of, of uh, yeah, the, at the, at one side the producers, but also the consumers, both sides have their own characteristics concerning quality. Um, and a system like this, Producers with um, only electrolyzers produce re uh, relatively uh, clean hydrogen, but uh, you have also producers with reformers and which uh, can introduce different pollution. Uh, and on the other side, pure hydrogen is required for fuel cells, but for chemical industry and power plants, maybe other uh, qualities are required required especially when you uh, when you burn the hydrogen it's not so important which kind of pollution is in the hydrogen gas and also the storage connected in this system has a role in keeping the quality within a certain limit now for for, for the for this backbone system gas is uh, is preparing a quality specification which is based on the principles mentioned here I don't read it uh, for you uh, line by line, line.
but it's important for both producers and consumers, uh, but also for TSOs that there is no expensive hydrogen cleaning facility required. And also that existing pipeline lines can be used. used. And also important is the ex inter interchangeability with the other, other European specifications. You don't want to live at, a, at an hydrogen island. The first important quality aspect is the hydrogen content. There's a wide international consensus about the 98% mole, uh, mole hydrogen content. And most of the producers can handle this. And also for most of the consumers, this percentage is enough. And only in case of a fuel cell, you have to pre-clean the gas before usage, because for a fuel cell, you need about 99.995% of clean hydrogen. But that's much too uh, too good for for transporting it uh, through a pipeline. Another aspect is um, the, the the rest of the two percent. That's more difficult. Uh, elements present in hydrogen depend on the way hydrogen is produced. When you produce hydrogen with an electrolyzer, only water and maybe a little bit of oxygen can be the pollution. But if you use reformers, they can also be um, methane and CO and uh, in the gas. So that makes it much more uh, complex. And also in addition, uh, existing pipelines, which has been in use for other uh, gases during uh, decades, uh, even after cleaning uh, before use, can add several molecules to the hydrogen during the transportation activities. And in case of using the hydrogen in the gas turbine, uh, for instance, is not a problem. It will be burn uh, always. But in case of feedstock or fuel cell, it's more important to decide what's allowed and what's not allowed. And if you look to international standards, uh, which, which uh, are, are also developed now. Um, there it's, it's not so much discussion about the 98%, but much more discussion about the 2% uh, of the rest. This sheet shows the specification we have in mind now, with on top the 98% of hydrogen, and for the rest, the restrictions for other gases, other, other mole molecules. And as I said, the 2% the, the, the uh, is more a puzzle than the 98%. So up to now, we are not absolutely sure that will be uh, fixed. And it will be uh, still the same uh, table if we have the system in operation. But up to now, it's the best uh, estimate. Uh, this is a list with national and international standards. I'm not a specialist about those standards, but uh, as I said before, the 98% is not a problem, but the 2% is still uh, a puzzle. Also, in, uh, if you compare everything within Europe. There's something about the hydrogen storage, which we are uh, preparing in Zuidwinning, in the north of uh, the Netherlands. At this location, we have already six gas caverns, natural, natural gas caverns in operation. And our goal is to build four hydrogen uh, caverns in addition, in combination with the new hydrogen storage plant. In the, 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 first, the first cavern has to be in operation at the end of 2026, and the last in the year 2030. And the storage cap capacity we have in mind is more than 6,000 ton per cavern, which makes it, with a little bit difference between the caverns, uh, about 26,000 ton of hydrogen storage capacity. This is a picture of, of, uh, of, the, of a, a test project. And this year and next year, we, uh, we have a demonstration project in progress in a borehole, which uh, has been drilled uh, as a preparation for a new gas cavern. 
uh, with a depth of 1700 meters. We store hydrogen with about uh, at about 200 uh, bar. And we have already tested several components and we will test at the beginning of next year additional co uh, components. It's all it has all the goal to prove that hydrogen storage in salt caverns is possible, but is also safe. About uh, a few things about uh, caverns and hydrogen quality. Like producers and consumers, the storage is also connected to the backbone and it has to send out the hydrogen within the quality specifications of the backbone. It's the same table as I showed uh, a, a few sheets before. <coughs> and concerning pollution, we only expect water coming out of the salt caverns. So we plant a hydrogen drying facility at the plant. And we will also check uh, the, 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 the dew point of the hydrogen to be sure that it is within the limits of the backbone. But still scientists uh, talk about the chance of microbiological activity within salt, uh, within the, the, the combination of salt and, and hydrogen, and which may result in other unwanted pollution. And to check whether this is a risk of, or not, we will also install uh, uh, equipment to check the microbiological activity in, in, in the earth. And those uh, equipment will be in, in, in that climate for, for about half a year. And after th that half a year, we will check whether there was activity or not. Um, and yes, and, and we suppose that the borehole filled with the 200 bar of hydrogen, that's, that it is representative for a real hydrogen curve. And so if we are successful with the borehole, we will also have a good basis for a real hydrogen cavern. And one issue which is still open is the way we have to measure the hydrogen flow. In case we measure a normal cubic meter, like we do in natural gas, and the pollution is not such a big problem. But in case we have to measure in kilograms, the 2% mole of molecules, uh, it, it sounds not so much, but if those molecules are heavy, then the, 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 the percentage in weight, it's much more than only the 2%. Uh, this is a discussion we just started and we expect to decide next year how to measure the hydrogen flow. This was my last sheet. Maybe there are already some questions. <clears throat> 